Hello, I'm Alex and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm just popping in today to chat to you about some of the things I've been knitting and sewing over the last couple of months. I haven't had a chat with you for ages and I didn't want to leave it any longer, so I thought it'd be a nice day. It's fairly bright, so I'm hoping that my camera's going to hold up. I know my autofocus is a bit funny if it's a dark day, it doesn't always cooperate and I don't want to make you feel seasick. So hopefully we've got a good setup today and I can just chat to you quickly about some of the things I've been working on. Um, the first thing is something I'm wearing, so I'll just jump up and see if I stand back. Yeah, I think you can see. This is the Dove Cottage sweater um, by Emma Wright for Fiberco and I knit this out of their Fiberco Law, it's from the Borrowdale collection. And I've mentioned before on the podcast that um, I actually work with a fibre company. When I'm not making my bags, I do several hours for them each week doing stuff with their social media and marketing. And um, yeah, so one of the perks of that is that I get to knit the patterns and work with the yarn, which I really love. And yeah, I'm really pleased with how this sweater turned out. It's exactly what I wanted. It's got this nice kind of funnel neck, which I really like. And I actually made some modifications because this part where I've got the deep ribbing, this should actually be colour work. So it had a very narrow rib with colour work body and colour work on the sort of cuffs. But I wanted to do, I've seen quite a few sweaters like this on the high street where I kind of have the funnel neck and this deep kind of ribbing. And I just thought it was a really nice sort of modern shape. It's got a, um, a nice sleeve, what would you call this, like a drop shoulder. Can you see? And actually, this is the first time I've seen the sweater, so I was a little bit nervous because I haven't ever done that before. But actually, I'm really pleased. I think um, you can probably see, look, you can't really see where I seamed it. Oh, we've got loads of light coming in now. I hope that's not going to... Is that going to affect us? Maybe I should put my blinds down. Oh, dear. The trials of podcasting. <laughs> okay, hold on a minute, and I'll be right back. I'll just pull the blinds down. Isn't that typical? As soon as I start filming, the sun wants to shine, and if it had been this shiny before, I would have sat in my usual place, but I thought, no, I need lots of light, so I sat right next to the window where the sun's coming in. But not to worry, hopefully you can still see me and I'm not too blown out. And yeah, I was chatting about my sweater, so yeah, I thought it was a really nice shape, and it kind of fit with like what's going on in the high street at the moment. It's really nice to have a nice hand knit version. The wool is really lovely. This is actually, um, I think I said it's called Law and it's in the earthy colourway and it's 100% lamb's wool from the Romney sheep breed. I'll bring it a bit closer because I haven't shown you, I don't think I was working on this when I spoke to you last, so can you see it's like really, it's got so many different variations in the in the yarn it's a really lovely it's not a flat green it's a lovely nice mossy sort of it's almost got those like camouflagey colors in it but yeah I really love it I enjoyed working with the yarn I don't it is a more rustic yarn which I think is perfect if you're somebody that's been interested in trying something that is a little bit more on the rustic side but you still want a nice sort of soft end product I think this is a really good starting point because I don't everybody's different so everyone's going to be more sensitive or less sensitive but I don't find this at all irritating to have near my skin it's sort of on my chest around my neck um but you do get the structure that you maybe wouldn't get from like a silky soft merino or a really luxury kind of soft blend of like alpacas or cashmere it's a different kind of yarn it's like more of a workhorse every day like this sweater is going to last which I really like I've um I've got some of my um what is it? It's the branches and buds pullover I did in the Quince and Co. That is a really great wool that just lasted so well. It's I've worn and worn and worn it and it's held up really nicely. So I think this is gonna do exactly the same. I think this is gonna be a really good yarn to have um in my handmade wardrobe. So I'm pleased with that. Let's have a quick sip of my tea because my throat's getting dry already. But so yeah, that's my first finished object. And I can't believe I haven't I haven't posted this on Instagram, haven't posted it anywhere. It's like I've just been knitting on it for pure pleasure every evening. It's been my like zone out 
and just knit <laughs> because it has especially over Christmas and January it was quite a busy time so I felt like I needed some I think that was one of the reasons why I picked this and didn't do it with the colour wet because I just wanted something really mindless that I could knit on in the evenings and yeah surprisingly just knitting on one thing and doing it every single day I think I knit it in about two months so it just shows if I stick to a project I it doesn't have to take me a year like it did my, with my Lucinda sweater <laughs> so so that's the first thing second thing I have got another finished object which I think is unlike me to have two I've got the Marlon hat by Sari Nordland which this is a really gorgeous hat this is like super squishy and very soft and silky yeah it's a really really lovely lovely yarn it's the I think it's called Hudson Worsted yeah Hudson Hudson Worsted by the Young Collective gonna focus yeah and it's an extra fine merino and yak blend and it's so soft I barely used any of this second ball so if I was to knit it again I think I probably wouldn't knit the I wouldn't knit this brim as long so I could try and get the whole hat out of one skein but yeah, this is a really good representation of the colour, I think. Maybe if anything, it goes slightly more to like a, almost like a raspberry, like a dark kind of muted raspberry. It's maybe a little red on the screen. But you can see the cables are so nice in this yarn. Actually, let me pop it on so you can get an idea, because it's kind of like a, is that going to focus on me now? <laughs> Come on. Let me see. Yeah, can you see that? It's got like a nice little slouchy bit. Yeah, I really, I'm really pleased. It's kept me super cozy. But yeah, it was a really nice knit, really good clear instructions. Probably messed up my hair now, but never mind. <laughs> yeah, I loved it. So I definitely recommend the pattern. I really like um, Sari's work. She does some really lovely patterns. She's done some lovely sweaters. Actually, she has a podcast as well. So I'll pop in the show notes a link to her podcast because I really like watching her on YouTube. So she'd be another one to follow if you kind of, I feel like we've got fairly similar sort of aesthetic. But yeah, she's got a lovely channel. So my show notes, just so you know, I always pop them over on my blog. So um, over on my website, alexcollinsdesigns.com and there'll be a little link below. And if anybody wants to get them, I send an email. So if you want to get the show notes to your email, every time I upload a video, you'll get a notification. And yeah, I'll send you all the details of everything I've talked about. There'll be a link also below this video on YouTube for you to sign up if you want to get the show notes to your email. So there we go. Had a little chat about my hat. Um, anything else finished? Don't think there's anything else finished. I'll chat about this quickly. I'll jump on sewing. This probably doesn't look very exciting. Shall I move it back a bit? There you go. You can see it's an Ogden cami, which I have done before. And this is just super basic black version. Can you see the texture? It's a crepe that I got at Sew Over It in London. I went last year um, to have a look at the shop in person. It's a really lovely space. And yeah, it's just, I got this from the remnants bin. I think I did it. I can't remember if it uses hardly any yardage, but it's a pattern I've used before and I would definitely recommend them. It's got a V in the front and the back. So actually this is probably the front, I was probably showing you the back. Um, and that's the back with the lower, can you see? Yeah, if I hold it to the sun, you can see. It's got the lower V in the back and slightly higher at the front. So yeah, and that's just a staple. I thought it'd be really nice, especially over Christmas. You know, and there's like times when you want to not feel dressy, but maybe like a little top with jeans. And yeah, it's just a nice kind of staple to have in your wardrobe. And also, actually, one of the things I'll show you my next thing that I have been working on, it's kind of the top that I would like to wear with this cardigan. So I'm knitting, it's called Truss, and it's a Brooklyn Tweed pan. I think the designer was Melissa Well um, for Brooklyn Tweed. And this is the truss cardigan. You can see this little bit here where it's got the split. That is actually, so this would be the side, this would be the front of the cardigan. I wonder if I could hold it up. 
a bit more like a cardigan yeah so this would be the front and then so you get this lovely detail at the side and it's got as I said a split hem and yeah I just really love the detail my friend Claire who she also works with me at the fiber company she was wearing this cardigan when we went up to Cumbria for our sort of yearly meet up and we have a little discussion about what's going on at the fiber company for the next year and she was wearing this cardigan and it was so cozy I can't remember um which yarn she'd used for hers but it was a really yeah it was lovely lovely blue cardigan and she was wearing it over dresses and looked really nice so I'm being a copycat and wanted to knit one as well I love this detail at the side I don't know if I bring it a little bit closer can you see it's sort of eyelets create this band but yeah, I'm sort of steaming away. Now, since I've finished this, um, the Dove Cottage sweater, I've been making a lot more progress on this. Because at first it was kind of, I don't know, I'd put it down and then I'd have to keep going back to check the chart. And now, although I do look at the chart every row just to make sure I know what I'm doing, it's much more intuitive. I can kind of remember what all the symbols are without having to keep checking the chart. And it's going quite quickly. I probably only have a few more rows. You can see I've almost got to the point so it's knit from the bottom up um, and then I think you, I can't remember, I think the sleeves might actually be knit flat but I'm gonna, I think I'll pick up and knit down which is what I did with these although everything else was seamed. I seamed the sweaters together and then I picked up around the armhole and knit down just because I'm so petite, I'm really really teeny tiny, I'm probably like five foot if you haven't met me before you might not know that from looking at me on camera but yeah I'm really small so it just it's so much easier to get a fit if I'm knitting and I can just stop when I get to the point when I need to so actually yeah if you're interested in knitting this I'll link in my Ravelry page I've put really full notes of how I knit this sweater and any of the modifications I made but yeah so although this is bottom up, up I've kind of worked out where I want it to hit so it should be okay lengthwise but I just find it easier with the sleeve to get a really good fit if I can sort of pick up and then knit the sleeves down so I think I'll do that and I haven't said but this is um this is another fiber company yarn but this is a really old yarn that um I had in my stash I think it was discontinued in about 2015 it's been discontinued for a while so I feel a bit mean showing it but it's the canopy worsted super luxury oh it feels amazing you can probably see it's got like a little bit of a halo on there but it is so soft this is, yeah, this is probably one of the softest yarns I've worked with for cardigans or sweaters. Usually I use just a sort of wall that I know is going to hold up. But it's been knitting really well. Like it's not pilling or felting or anything with me sort of as I'm working with it. So, yeah, I think I think it will be okay. But, yeah, obviously you don't need to use this yarn and it's not a fibre company pattern. So if you have a look on Brooklyn Tweed's Ravelry page, I think you can see all the different yarns that people have been working with. But I particularly use this one because I'm swatching for a different sweater, which I, oh no, a different cardigan, which I think I did talk to you about last time. I think it was the Live Cardigan um, by Carrie Bostick Hogue, which is in, I've got my book here. Yeah, in the Madder Anthology, I was knitting one of her patterns. Actually, it's on the back there. I was trying to get gauge for this. Couldn't. Well, I mean, obviously I could have if I changed needles and things. But at the same time, I realised that I got gauge to knit the truss cardigan. So <laughs> I just switched projects and thought I'll do live with something else, even though the canopy was called for in the live pattern. But yeah, so this is in one of my project bags that you've seen me show before if you're new to the podcast I am a bag maker and I screen print all my fabrics using organic cotton and non-toxic ink so this is one of my new design well no I shouldn't have said that it's not a new design I think I've got new designs in my head because I have been working on a new design but I haven't got that to show you today I'm doing a nice spring summer bag so that will be coming soon, but it's not on the print table yet. This is one of my original bags that you always find in the shop. They're always there. So actually, as I'm mentioning about me having the spring summer bags coming very soon, if you wanted one of the winter bags that I did with the trees, I've got one of my whips is in one of the sock ones, but I also have the drawstring bags with the little trees and the little 
log cabin. There are a few of those left in the shop. I think I've put all the stock that I had left of those is in the shop when this video goes up. So if you've been wanting one of those, I'd grab one because I'm probably not going to update those again um, until next winter because the spring summer bags are coming and I'm putting all my effort into working on those. So, okay, I'm just going to pause for a second because Thea is coming home. Hold on. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, my boyfriend Thea is just coming home. He's got the day off. So I just paused while he came in, got himself settled down. I can't remember, I think I was just telling you about the bags and saying that the winter bags, those are probably the last ones until next winter. And I think I was just about to show you I actually have one of my projects in my little sock sacks. Not much to show of this, but oh, I'll give you a little peek. These are Milky Chai socks that I'm doing by Danielle George. And as you can see, I've only done the teeny tiniest little bit. <laughs> of the pattern there. Let me see, I think I've got the pattern in here that I can show you. I get an idea of what it will look like. I really like Danny's Danny's projects. Um a good picture. There we go. Can you see it's in the photos, yeah, you can get an idea of the pattern. I'm not sure you'll see it's a bit dark. You can't see the pattern so clearly, but those are the socks and you can see it has the rib that runs all the way through. But this gives you a much clearer idea of what that little pattern that I'm doing will become. So yeah, I haven't got very far into that, but I'm enjoying the little milk chai pattern. And I love those kind of socks when they have the rib that goes all the way down. So I think that will look really cute. And this is in the wool barn. I got this yarn when I was at Fiber East in the summertime and it's a really nice colour and this is kind of, I always think of Danny from Little Bobbins when I use these kind of really soft muted colours because that's her favourite kind of yarn to work with so yeah I thought this is a very Danny colour when I picked it for the Milky Chai socks. Um, I think this is the Flutter colourway I want to say and it's their smooth sock base. Um, yeah I just really like the wool barn, I love Maya so I'm always happy to support her shop and it was really nice getting to pick in person some colours out so yeah so I've got those socks which is my work in progress at the moment working on my cardigan and I think that's it really I've got a couple of sewing I haven't got a lot of sewing things to show you but I have been working on a few sort of projects but nothing really to show you I've got um a lark t-shirt but I also got some jersey when I was at Sew Over It to do the lark t-shirt um, but it's kind of in pieces so I haven't shown that to you today but it'll probably be ready next time and I've started doing one of the other Sew Over It patterns um, their ultimate shift dress which I wanted to wear with um, like a little polar neck underneath which I thought would be a really cute look so I've got a couple of sewing things on the go but not really anything to show you apart from the odd and canny but sorry it was a bit of a funny episode today. I feel like I had to pause a couple of times and have problems with the blinds and all these sort of funny things that don't usually happen. Usually I just kind of go through in one take. So I'm not sure how this is going to be when I edit at the end because usually I don't have to join anything together. I just sort of shoot, as I say, in one take and um, that's it. So I hope you enjoyed this and you liked seeing some of the things that I've been making. Hopefully it won't be too long until I... I'm back and I can show you again maybe what I've been working on next month but have a really lovely weekend if you're watching this in real time otherwise have a lovely day and I'll speak to you soon bye